Welcome to this video on data analysis using SQL. In the last two years, we have all been impacted by the outbreak of COVID-19 virus. Today, I would like to look at the impact it has had on us. My name is Shivam and let's get started. The primitive steps are to get the data, clean it and import it to MySQL Workbench. I'll make sure to share the link for all the necessary resources. This data has been taken from the site named Our World in Data and it is fresh all the way till June 2nd of 2022. Also, larger data such as these needs to be imported through command line. So do let me know if you would like me to share the steps on how to do that. Let's first run the queries to see the entire data in the two tables. We have a vaccinated table. We have quite a few columns here. The column I want to draw your attention to is the total cases column. So in the total cases column, when, when it says that on a particular day, say 2nd of April, there are 235 total cases, it means that up till that day, there are 235 total cases. It does not mean that on that day, there were 235 total cases. This is important. Similarly, we have the people vaccinated, people fully vaccinated, and total boosters. They are essentially a running total of their individual columns. Let's look at the second table, the casualties and cases. Uh, we have the total cases, again, a running total column and total deaths. Um, in new cases, the cases are a little different when we say of. There are five new cases. We mean on 24th of February, there were five new cases. So this is different from total cases and total deaths. That was about the tables. Now let's run a few queries to derive insights out of data. For the benefit of time, I have written all the queries beforehand. Though I'll make sure to share the GitHub link uh, for all these queries in case someone would like to use them. Now let's begin with the first one. Firstly, depending upon the country we are living in, let's see the likelihood that we are vaccinated or not. So likelihood of being vaccinated, and here's the query, I'm going to run it. Here's the output. I added the population as well, which is not required actually. So 97% in United Arab Emirates and so on and so forth we have the vaccination rate. Now let's look at the map for this. Here we are. Here, the ones which are green in color means they are highly vaccinated. Did Countries like Canada, uh, China, parts of Australia. Then there are yellow colored countries like USA, India, Russia, and others, which are mildly vaccinated and then there are countries in africa uh, which are white in color which means they are sparsely vaccinated okay so now let's look at the next query next we will look at the flip side of this possibility of being infected depending on the country we are in so let's go to the sql workbench here we are and this is the likelihood of being infected depending on the country we are in i'm going to run the query Yes, there is a, so we have Faroe Island, which have the maximum infection rate. There is a lot of value in seeing the population of it. So yes, the percentages speak a lot, but if we look at the population, we'll see that it's 49,000. So 70% infection rate is uh, understandable. Let's look at the map for this one. So here we are. And similarly, we have the uh, dark red color, which means high infection rate, light red color, which means moderate infection rate, and uh, white would mean sparse infection rate. So we see Western Sahara, which has no infection rate at all. China, India, which have less infection rate. US has a very high infection rate. It's countries like France, and here Estonia, Iceland, they have very high infection rates. So if we are living in these countries, we would have a higher chances of being infected by the COVID virus. And also depends upon time to time. 
but that is not taken care of in this particular query because I just did an average for the whole two years. Okay, so now we are going to look at a little more grim side of the things, the death rate. Uh, let's go to the SQL query. What I am interested in are those countries which have a higher death rate than the global death rate. If I only run this query, I will find all the countries with their individual average number of deaths. Now, we're going to find the global average of uh, deaths that have occurred due to this disease. So if I run this query, these are user-defined variables, set add. So this is how we set a variable according to our needs. If I run this, the global average is this. Now, if I run this particular query, I will find all those countries which have their average deaths greater than the global average. Uh, let's see, what is it? And we have a total of 50 countries which have a higher uh, death rate than the global average deaths. Let's see the graph for this. Here we are at the graph and uh, we see that there are around 20, 30 countries which are making, which are actually the outliers and making the global average the highest. If we go down, that, then the countries which, have, which are lesser than the global average are not too less. They're not too far away from the global average. But if we go on this side, we see a huge difference. The numbers. This tells us that there are a few countries which were very highly affected by COVID than the other ones. Next, let's see the density of total number of cases per country. Back to our SQL workbench. And uh, this is the query we're gonna run. Let me run this. And this is the percentage of population infected in the country. 70% in Faroe and Faroe Island and Andorra, Gibraltar, and so on and so forth. Now let us say this is an important query and we wanna use it often. So for that, we would like to create a view. So how do we do that? So I'm gonna write drop view if exists, which would do that if I already have a view called cases density, which I will if I run the entire query again, so it will take care of that thing. All right, so let's run this. And now we have our query. Now we're gonna do select all from cases density. Gonna run this. And we have a, the same result again. Now this particular result can be used over and over again. This can also be used as a part of a particular query. And that's why it's very useful. Finally, I wanna do a continent-wise breakdown of uh, the different variables. We wanna see the total cases, total deaths, and the population. So let's do it. I have the query, I'm gonna just paste it. And here we have it. We have continent, maximum of total cases are total cases, maximum of total deaths as total deaths, population, and group by continent. Let's run it. There we have it. If you see, if you notice this, and this is exactly why I wanted to wanted to do it, was because if we see that Asia has more total cases than population, well, why is it? because this population is not the correct population. When I simply put in the population, what it gives me is the last population. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to use a rule up function. We have to use sum of population. I cannot do sum of population uh, because let's say if I do that, it will give me, we cannot do the sum of population because population has been listed in every row. So, which means that let's say there were uh, 
50 rows for India. So I'm counting 1.5 billion, the population of ours, 1.2 billion, I guess, uh, something around it, 50 times, which is not the right description. So what I have to do is over partition by continent. And if I do that, and then I run it, I will get the correct population. I can give it an alias, say uh, population. So, yes. There we have it. The, the total cases, total deaths, population for all the continents. That's all I wanted to share. Thank you all for watching. Uh, with this, we come up full circle. I hope you got something out of this video. And I'll see you guys some other time with some other informative video. With that, have a good one. Bye-bye.